Da 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 da. Oh! That would not have been good. Hold on. About probably not, to be honest. Probably terrible still. Probably move. <sighs> we'll figure it out. Yeah, nice. Nice. Do you want some extra light? Oh, yeah. No, that'll do. Okay, welcome to today's video. So, if you haven't already seen by the title, in today's video, I'm pretty much going to be explaining exactly why I didn't get into Cambridge. I'm going to be giving all of, my, all of my statistics, all of like my personal statement, and all of the feedback that I got from like the interviews, etc., etc. And then exactly what I'm going to be doing this year. So, like, am I going to uni? Am I taking a gap here? If I am going to uni, what uni? So, yeah, lots packed into this video, and I just hope that it's going to be able to provide some value for you guys. And any of you thinking of applying to Oxbridge, hopefully, you can avoid the things that I did wrong. So that you can actually get in. Oh, and this video is sponsored by Amber Student, but more on that at the end. Okay, so first of all, where did I actually apply to? Well, I applied to Cambridge, Imperial, Bath, Southampton, and Birmingham for automotive engineering or just general engineering at Cambridge and just mechanical engineering at Imperial because they didn't have the automotive course, which is just not ideal. And yeah, hopping straight into my stats for those of you that haven't followed this channel. At GCSE, I got nine nines, and I did as my options business, triple science, history, and PE. And then in A levels, I got four A stars, which was maths, further maths, physics, and chemistry. And then the EPQ, I got an A star, and I did my EPQ on lucid dreaming. Now, I've got videos on exactly how I got all of those nines. I've got videos on how I got all of these A stars. Well, not yet, but they're coming. And then I got a video on how I got the A star in the EPQ. So if you do want to check out any of those videos, links are in the description below. But at the end of the day, grades are only a fraction of the application. The main things are actually going to be your personal statement. That is mine. You can pause, have a quick read if you want. And I've also got a video on how I wrote that. So that's also in the description below. But that's probably one of the most important aspects of the application as a whole because it conveys your personality. It conveys your passion and it shows why you're actually interested in the course and their university. Obviously, it's quite general because you've got to target it at all five of your choices, but it basically just shows why you, like why you over anyone else with the same grades. But then for a few other universities, you've got admissions assessments and you've got interviews, and those are the four key pillars of any application and especially to Oxbridge. Okay, now you've got a bit of background on my stats, so all of my grades and my personal statement. Here is exactly why I got rejected and all of the feedback that I got from St. Catherine's College. I'm just going to bust that up on the screen there, but they start off by saying they wrote to me with disappointment as I didn't get in. They also said that on average the university received five applicants per place, the competition was strong, it was intense. Basically it's just a bunch of waffles to try and make me feel better. <laughs> but then going on to the actual specifics of why I didn't get in, they basically started by giving all of the positives. They said I gave a really impressive description of my work experience and performed well in some interview questions. Coming out of those interviews I actually felt really strong against them. Uh, not against them, strong for my performance. Like I had good examples to back all of the key skills that you need, so things like leadership, time management and all of that and it's really good to have have an understanding of what you've done to prove yourself for those skills. For example, time management, all of the stuff that you do and how you balance that alongside your studies, that's just good to know and have in your back pocket in case they ask you about it. But then also, any work experience you've done, you've got to really know what you did and how that benefited you and how that put you on the path you are on currently to study that subject. I literally just dissected everything to do with my work experience. And actually, in my work experience video, which is also linked in the description below, I show you that I actually wrote a complete summary of of my time there and any, everything that I took from that experience when I went so that I literally knew everything I did and how it benefited me and I could just throw that out in an interview and that was really impressive for a lot of the uh, interviewees at both Oxbridge and Imperial. But then the biggest thing is just being able to show that you've got like a flexible mindset. So when you're answering questions, they'll throw some mathematical and some engineering questions at you. Go in with like your initial thoughts, but then when they start to guide you and question your logic, so they might be like, oh, why have you chosen to do this? Take a step back, take a breather, look at what they're saying because they might be trying to direct you in the right path and be open to the fact that the initial path you took was wrong. I did this and I realized what I was doing was wrong and I said, oh yeah, this, what you've said really makes sense. This is why and here's where I'm going to go from there. And I did that for all of the interview questions and that I felt was really strong and is what they recommend doing for pretty much any interview. So try to like take on board their feedback, explain your thoughts and how you're going to go and implement that feedback. So yeah, anyway, they said that was really strong. But the reason that I didn't get into the university was because considered alongside my admissions assessment score, they didn't feel they could make me an offer. So pretty much they said I screwed up the admissions assessment and that's why I didn't get into Cambridge, which in all fairness was the thing that I thought I would have screwed up if I did screw anything up because when it came to revising for that admissions assessment, I actually had mocks at the time and I thought that those mocks were going to be the grades I was going to get for my A-levels because it was through the whole pandemic and all of that. There was a lot of uncertainty. So I kind of prioritized my mocks over revising for the entrance exam. I probably only did like four past papers. Going into it, like I, I wasn't hugely prepared. I made the best of a bad situation, but I didn't come out of the, uh, I didn't come out of the admissions assessment feeling hugely like confident about it. So if 
there is one piece of advice anyone's going to be taking from this, it is make sure you revise for that entrance exam. It is a rough exam. It is multiple choice at the end of the day, but the content and the application of the maths, you just have to have experienced loads of questions to be able to have that mindset to go in and just blast out those papers. Because it's not really something that you just take the logic from and kind of slowly work your way to an answer. You have to just go rapid fire and know exactly how to get to these answers from the start. And that just comes from practice. Just do abnormal amounts of past papers and you'll be completely fine. So that is exactly why I didn't get into Cambridge. The grades were there, the interview was there, the personal statement was there, but I completely muffed the admissions assessment. So don't do what I did and prioritise your marks. Prioritise that admissions assessment if you do want to get into Cambridge. Okay, moving on. What am I doing this year now? Okay, well initially I was actually set on going to Imperial and that was my like number one choice out of all of my options when I applied and I was actually going to pick that over Cambridge if I did get into Cambridge. Then I got all of my offers and I got into Imperial, I got into Bath and after like, speaking to loads of the students at the different universities, looking at the facilities that were available nearby, I realised that actually Imperial wouldn't be for me. Even though I'd love the London life, I think that that would be absolutely wicked. Just the sheer demand of the course and well lack of from what I've heard from a lot of students in London, the social scene, I did not think that, that was the best place for me to thrive and be able to do everything that I wanted to do and Bath had kind of the best of both worlds it had a good social life it had a really good course it had the Institute for the Advancement of Automotive Propulsion Systems nearby but it's bearing in mind I kind of want to go into the automotive sector if I do to do something with my degree in engineering that is what I want to be doing so having that facility so nearby kind of confirmed my decision in that university but also the fact that it wasn't going to be as a demanding of a course meant that I had time or will supposedly have time for everything else that I want to do so if you've watched my channel for a while you know that I'm a really big advocate for the startup space and I've got a few part-time jobs in that industry. I want to be carrying on those, I want to be building up my network in that area and that extra bit of time will allow me to do so whilst tackling things like the gym, whilst tackling my studies and YouTube and everything like this. So that was my decision in Bath, but then I kind of teetered around with the idea of a gap year because going into summer, I was doing this internship with Mana, the uh, startup that I am working for. And yeah, I said to myself that if that went really well, I would strongly consider a gap year. That has gone really well, so I did strongly consider a gap year and basically if I took a gap year, what I would do is I'd work for them as much as possible because it's working from home like it's a remote basis so I've got a lot of flexibility with that and I can do that from anywhere in the world so probably do a little bit of travel and stuff as well but then I'd also have time for some personal ventures like I've always been wanting to try dropshipping even though it's not the most like not the most fulfilling business in the world it does have potential to make a lot of money and I know a lot of people that are doing it so I've always wanted to try it and I feel like it's gonna be one of those things that if I get to the age of 30 and I haven't tried it yet I'm gonna be a bit disappointed in myself so those are a few reasons why I would have wanted to take a gap year but when it all boiled down to it I know that myself I thrive when I've got a routine, when I've got a structure and I can start to balance everything around that structure. Going to university would give me that. It would also give me the social life that I've been really craving since well, since summer and just realising that if I take a gap year, I wouldn't necessarily... Well, I would have that, but I'd have to really try and find it for myself whereas at university is kind of thrown at you and you can just go and make the most of it. So I did want that social life. I did want that routine and I did want to be able to kind of pack everything in around that, but also it just made the most sense for this YouTube content and making content for you guys. So it kind of just led me to the ultimate decision that I do you want to go to university this year so yeah in september i am going to be going to bath university in september so now i'm going to be going to bath university to study automotive engineering we're going to be making loads of vlogs and stuff so it's going to be sick but and now this was a really tricky situation basically at bath you have to apply for 10 different accommodation options and i put loads of en-suites i was really happy getting any of my top five choices and it would be so calm because like 90 percent of students get their top five choices or something like that then about a week ago after i was completely sound in my decision at studying with bath i got my accommodation offer and I got my eighth choice option it literally looked like a prison cell it was nowhere near what I was expecting to get and it did quite put me off especially for the content and just the aesthetic like yeah I just wanted a good place to live I wanted like an ensuite I wanted to shower so I could film one of the usual vlogs I do so it did throw a massive spanner in the works and did make me reconsider my gap year but after thinking about it and meeting all my fat mates they all seem really really nice so I'm still confident in going this year to Bath but I do know a lot of people who have got their accommodation offers really aren't happy with it and then have actually deferred for that reason. And yeah, that's peak. No one really wants that. So you've got to have other ways of sorting out student accommodation. And that's where Amber Student comes in. Okay, so who actually are Amber Student? Well, Amber Student are a student accommodation service with over 20,000 properties in 100 cities worldwide. And their aim is to make it as easy as possible for you to book A, a student accommodation that you can trust, but B, also student accommodation that you like. And honestly, looking at some of these accommodations is making my accommodation now at Bath literally look like a prison. So I definitely recommend having a look. But okay, how does it actually work? Well, you go through three steps. First of all, you searched based on university 
university city budget room type and facilities basically so that you can find exactly what type of accommodation you want then you fill in your details like moving date course etc confirm your booking and pay the deposit then after that they sort out all of the paperwork like lease agreements for you and offer 24 7 for support for any questions you might have then once it's all sorted and your room is confirmed you can attend live viewing sessions with property experts so that you can see your new home before you move in now obviously I've also been in touch with the team they all seem like great people and I know Mia Alice also worked with them in the past on one of the in fact what actually was the video yeah she actually worked with them on one of her bath accommodation reviews and basically basically went in depth into all of the different accommodations at bath and honestly from that video I just got really good vibes and she actually goes to one of the accommodations if you want to check that out links also in the description but yeah if you are looking for student accommodation either for this year or next year because you actually have to think about student accommodation quite early on for like second third year etc then go down and click the top link in my description below and it'll run you through it all but otherwise that is it for me today i really do hope you've enjoyed this video i hope you found it helpful and basically why i didn't get into cambridge that you don't make that same mistake in the future and also like i said i will be going to bath so all of the student vlogs and stuff will be sick if any of you are going to bath feel free to message me it's always good to know more people there but yeah hope you did enjoy we've also got loads and loads of a-level content and then all of the university stuff coming so if that sounds like content you want to watch go and hit the subscribe button down below so you don't miss anything otherwise that is it for me today and i'll see you in the next one I live inside my own world of make-believe